Global Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're pleased to announce that Maverick Systems have been presented with the Next 100 Global Awards 2023 for the Banking Transformation Company of the Year. Based in the Indian southern city of Chennai, Maverick Systems helps global banking businesses accelerate business transformation technology. 2,600 plus technology specialists and proven frameworks help customers navigate a rapidly changing environment, enabling a sharper definition of their goals and measures to achieve them. To find out more about the outstanding success of Maverick Systems, I was able to talk to the company's CEO, Mr. Ranga Reddy. Well, hello and thank you for talking to us today and congratulations to Maverick Systems on their award-winning success. Nice to hear that news from you, Phil, and it really is a testimony of the good work our team has been doing over the last two decades. Thank you very much, and we are honoured. Well, let's take a closer look at the success story that is Maverick Systems. And the first question I'd like to ask you is what you see as the key challenges and opportunities in the banking technology industry today, particularly in relation to banking transformation and digital innovation? See, if you are actually looking at the business side of the banking, which may not be as appropriate to talk today, but still is something that drives overall change in the bank, we are faced with a situation where the NPAs are looming, and we are faced with a situation where interest rates are actually sky at the highest. And there is a gloom with regard to potential depression that is there. And then after that, overall profitability. These are the kind of a business issues that are actually receiving critical attention from the business leaders of the bank. Nevertheless, if you actually look at the technology side, so typically looking at technology, they're still looking in terms of technologies that could help them acquire the customers, more importantly, retain the customers and service them in a way that is profitable. So to that extent, when you actually say digitization, I think large extent at this point of time, the focus is on acquiring, retaining, and servicing in a profitable way by almost looking at uh, re-examining the fundamentals rather than trying to actually put on another Band-Aid in order to make the system work. So there's a fundamental rethink that's going on. One pressure point to look at things fundamentally is the competition and the customer preferences that have changed quite a bit. The second area is the regulatory influence itself that has been brought in on the banking industry at large, not only in one region but across, I would say, almost across the entire uh, developed world, including uh, Asia Pacific uh, and even Middle East is following suit. And the third area that is actually putting the overall stress is the emergence of the new, uh, what do you call the, the Davids and the Goliath fight that's happening between the fintechs and the banks. While there is a lot to be seen in terms of what is the scope and scale of a fintechs that could, that could actually challenge the global banks, but still there are a few examples already which are definitely making the banks to take a relook at how they would actually look at innovation and how they would actually look at a, what you call hyper-personalization when it comes to you know, a particular segment of a customer. So these are the things that are actually getting re-established by the entry of the fintechs. So these are the kind of context in which the banking is, at this point of time, what you call traversing. So uh, many a times people say that this is the turning point, but I would say this is the real turning point, especially when it comes to having an ability to come through this phase and maintain leadership, it's going to take a lot from the banking industry, both from the business side as well as technology side. Well, in the context of banking transformation, what are some of the emerging technologies and indeed trends that you believe will have a significant impact on the industry going forward? And by the way, how is Maverick Systems staying at the forefront of these advancements? Yeah. See, the most popular things 
that you hear often wherein substantial investments are going on, even though the technologies and the platforms are already not proven. So there is a lot of experimentation and risk taking going on with regard to customer experience technology. Similarly, we are having sufficient investments and innovations that are being worked upon in the area of cloud. In cloud, you have two different segments. One is to enable applications from on-prem to cloud. And number two, once the applications are on cloud, and naturally most banks are having a necessity to have a multi-cloud environment, how do you actually make that part cloud native? And then comes your automation. Now, we have been hearing automation for the last 20 years, but at this time, with regard to AI, ML having matured, automation is moving from a regular process automation to also address certain not so low hanging, high complexity areas of the process and the product, that is process and product aspects of the banking uh, business uh, is going to get automated with a quite a different uh, paradigm wherein you are actually not looking at just doing some kind of a workflow automation, rather you actually moving from workflow automation to that of intelligent automation. So that area is going to be another a million dollar question in terms of how is it that we are going to get the existing, what you call as uh, keep the lights on part, as efficient and as cost effective as possible. So from that angle, the third area that I foresee is in terms of whether you like it or not, there is a, going to be a focus on application rationalization. And that would be in, in line with how the bank envisions its own cloud strategy. So to that extent, there is application modernization may sound like business as usual, but it'll come with a different twist this time, saying that, you know, how is it that I could actually get the maximum cost as well as efficiencies out of it. And finally, you know, the, what do you call that? Uh, the new oil AI. <laughs> so the AI at this point of time uh, is being seen as a tool rather than a solution. So how is it that AI is actually going to become a business enabler as compared to a, a tool with possibilities. So these are the kind of things, like as I said, customer experience, cloud, automation, and AI. While these are most popular, the other one in terms of application racialization and uh, how do I actually keep my run the bank budgets to the minimum while efficiency are maximized are going to be the kind of things that uh, we see will be the kind of uh, priorities that we'll be working on in the next three to five year period. Well, let's look at some of the, the modern technologies. One of those, of course, is the so-called fintech disruptors, the rise of those. How do you see traditional banks competing and collaborating with these new players? And how does the Maverick system support banks in navigating this okay. evolving landscape? Okay. See, we have seen uh, most of the fintechs emerging in a multiple play, multiple uh, modes, like one is the platform player. A FinTech primarily provides a platform to a variety of banks in order to do a particular process or a particular product distribution. So to the extent we have certain platform companies that are coming out uh, and are challenging the banks with their efficiency to support a particular offering. So these are platform companies. And then we are also seeing actually a competing product. That is, they're actually not offering platforms, rather they're actually developing a product. And their products are quite directly in competition with the products that uh, banking have been, banks have been offering. So this is a second type of, uh, you know, what do you say, a, a, a FinTech that is coming in. And the third one is in terms of actually the innovative products, wherein we are not talking about existing products, but are also products that are probably hybrids, or products that have so far not been the focus of the larger banks. So that is something that you see as a third category. 
And the fourth category is a combination because they start off as a platform and then become a competition. <laughs> So it is something like they actually scale the ability to service by being a platform and it doesn't stop uh, uh, that particular platform company from actually offering a service in due course. So it is definitely going to be a challenge wherein till the maximum efficiencies are brought out and the maximum innovation is actually brought to be what do you call brought to the brought to the help of the customer, this competition will continue. And more to add to this complexity is the evolving speed at which the technology is evolving. And uh, I think that uh, we saw fintechs eight years back and then subsequently if you look at the fintechs today, the kind of technology based on which they are offering either of these three services, be it a platform, be it a product, be it so this is all changing almost every three to four years. So kind of things that we are talking of now are still more with regard to products to be offered or processes to be serviced with efficiency. But as time goes on, I'm of the view that we are likely to see a lot more path-breaking innovations there. So this challenge is there to stay for at least a decade. And I think it is part of the process to get us to be efficient as a banking institution. Well, let's look at the subject of security and privacy. These, of course, are critical concerns in the banking industry. How does Maverick Systems actually address these challenges when implementing banking transformation solutions, particularly in the context of increased digitization and, and data sharing? Uh, one thing, traditionally, banks have always been having a far better outlook with regard to security, compliance, and regulation. So to the extent banking has always been a regulated industry. But what happens is as we evolve as a bank, we almost become a lifestyle service provider by adding a lot of things that would otherwise come outside of the banking services. For example, retail services, online gaming services or online travel services. Now you're actually seeing a situation wherein the bank is opening itself up with a married products in order to take their customers or keep their customers. So there comes the complexity with regard to overall security because earlier it was a monolith and there was a kind of a security layer around whatever I was offering and today I'm an open system and I'm actually making it necessary to work with the ecosystem. And typically, as compared to banking or telecom, the rest of the industry is not as regulated. They're regulated to the extent that industry perceived important, but today you are actually having a, a kind of an intersection wherein you need to actually guard yourself far more when it comes to what we call as open banking uh, architecture. So from that angle, security becomes on its own a very important capability to be uh, what you call f f developed within the bank as well as through the vendors. And to that extent, we see that banks are comparatively more prepared but if you really ask me about dollar spend, you know, it is not directly in proportion with the importance that that is likely to take up in the next like, three to five years to come. So from that angle, at this point of time, we do have offerings in the space of uh, security, compliance and regulatory. However, we actually foresee that to be a larger investment as we go into the next three to five years. So this is an offering that we have been having for the last uh, four to five years, ever since the open banking became a mandatory requirement by various regulators, we've been talking about it, and we only see uptake with regard to investment coming slowly rather than coming forthright. So that's the kind of context that we are in. Well, the pandemic has been devastating for many, but not necessarily for the banking industry. COVID-19 has accelerated digital transformation across industries. How would you say this has impacted the demand for banker technology solutions? And how has Maverick Systems adapted to meet these changing needs? See, the first thing that uh, COVID brought about is how do I run the business remote? And uh, that's exactly been the entire, you know, digital banking uh, was always wanting to, digital banking basically means doing banking remote or from anywhere, anytime. So from that angle, the compulsion, the compulsion of COVID 
actually released quite a bit of uh, what you call energy and initiative and investments to make the progress that is required to go through those two years uh, wherein we were almost working remote or servicing customers remote. And more importantly, banking being a service industry as compared to manufacturing, it had a lot more potential to actually explore the boundaries with regard to how do I actually service a customer uh, completely in a remote manner to an extent wherein he still feels supported and wanted. So from that angle, COVID actually broke the entire internal inertia with regard to, you know, let's actually have a combination of brick and mortar along with online. So th that particular inertia is something that was not affordable. So to that extent, that really helped. And once you actually see the benefits of uh, your investments, you normally go on to invest further. So that's the second step and third step that happened over the last four years. So from that angle, the front-end technologies became far more in demand as compared to back-end technologies. And similarly, the middleware competency became very important so that you can actually hook up some intelligent new age front-end application or a product with your back-end through some recent degree of uh, you know, API integration. So from that angle, it actually, while open banking was being talked about for a long time, COVID actually accelerated the entire investment in it and brought a lot of focus onto the front end and the middleware uh, being invested in in order to actually manage the ability to service the customer in a reasonably remote manner with a reasonably good uh, support and uh, satisfaction. So I think we should really thank COVID in some ways, but nevertheless, it did put us in reasonable amount of trouble. But sometimes environmental aspects uh, really create a, a kind of change that probably managers would probably take a decade to do. So it did that in two years. Well, looking ahead to the future, what is Maverick Systems' vision for that within the banking industry? And how do you as a company contribute to the overall evolution and success of the industry? See, we are a small player and often most of the things that we do are narrow and deep as compared to offering a wide uh, spectrum of services across all the technical needs of a bank. So we are, to an extent, we limit ourselves and then go deep and we would like to continue in the similar manner over the next decade. And in that, if I really look at, we would like to really specialize more deeper and bring in almost ready-to-use solutions in four areas. One area being regulatory compliance and risk, so which is something that uh, is a bedrock of uh, you know banking industry. The second area that we are really wanting to take forward is to get more and more deeper with regard to the entire cloud operations. So there's a combination of things that we normally talk about when we talk about cloud ops, DevOps, ML ops, data ops. So from that angle, there is a FinOps in terms of, you know, cloud is cheaper as long as you manage it well. Otherwise, it could be a Frankenstein's goes wherein the bills are running and you don't even know. So that, that finance ops or FinOps is another thing that we are thinking of. This is something that is in an evolutionary stage at this point of time. And as we go into the next five to 10 years, it becomes a very core requirement for any IT organization. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is customer experience. And that's where like, we would like to have specialized solutions specific to retail, specific to corporate banking, and specific to wealth management. And final one is in terms of our uh, automation, which we call it sometimes intelligent automation. Sometimes we are calling it this operations automation. Sometimes we are calling it you know, marketing and uh, campaign management automation. So automation by and large with ML and uh, AI being part of it is the fourth service that we want to get deeper. In these four areas, we are already working with banks, large as well as regional leaders who are already in the cutting edge. And we would like to also add a few more customers who are early investors in these four areas and thus make progress over the next uh, six to 10 years. Well, thank you for the fascinating insight into Maverick Systems and the work that you do. Once again, congratulations on the award-winning success from Global Banking and Finance.